Here are true facts about paraphilia. Para, 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 Forget it, let's move on. Paraphilias are defined in psychology today as a condition in which a person's sexual arousal and gratification depend on fantasizing about and engaging in sexual behavior that is atypical and extreme. We could have used Webster to define paraphilia, but what's the fun in that? Paraphilia can range from sexual attraction towards certain objects, non-sexual body parts, trees, fire, stuffed animals, cars, the list is endless really, to certain acts, to pretending to be a baby, popping a balloon, being robbed, immersing the genitals in liquid, eating human flesh, what the <clears throat> things deemed unusual. That is how the human do. As we have seen from the previous small list of kinky things humans are sometimes into, the list surpasses the imagination of most. Unless you're a writer for American Horror Story. Did you see that part where the hotel guy whips the girl to death? Wow, well, never mind. Don't watch it. It's some creepy stuff. I don't even know how that shit got on cable. Point is, there are pretty much endless types of sexual variations, and they can range from trees to straight-up murder. A coercive behavior is one that involves two individuals, one who is super down for the act while the other is usually very much not down with this form of sexy time. Paraphilias, like voyeurism and frauderism, are both under the category of coercive paraphilia, because having a stranger watch you have sex and rub their genitals or private parts up against you is usually an unpleasant and disturbing experience for an unsuspecting person. These desires and most other forms of coercive paraphilia are illegal. Yes, indeed. Most people don't like having a stranger rub their genitals up against them. Surprise, surprise. Zoophilia, the sexual desire to have intercourse with animals, is also considered coercive because an animal cannot give consent to do the do. On the other hand, non-coercive paraphilia is a sexual desire that can include a consenting person, inanimate objects, or certain acts, like wearing a diaper because inanimate objects are usually not emotionally affected by someone doing things to them. These paraphilias are not illegal. There is a fetish concerning the popping of balloons, but the balloons don't seem to care one way or the other, if they're being popped or not. By far, the most disturbing case of non-coercive paraphilia was in 2001, when a 42-year-old computer specialist, Armin Muse, contacted Bern Jurgen Brands on an internet chat room called the Cannibal Café. The two agreed to meet at Mew's house where Brands was sedated and dismembered with consent, all of it taken on video. Although Brands gave consent, Mew's was still sent to jail after being deemed mentally sound enough to discern that eating people was not a thing that people should do. Therefore, if you are concerned if you are doing a coercive or legal act, just ask yourself, is this person not giving me or not able to give consent? Am I practicing cannibalism? If you said yes to either of these questions, stop what you're doing. If you answer no to these questions, enjoy your sexy time. The other concern of paraphilia is the obsession that can occur with the desire that stops a person from living a normal life. Many sexual desires do not hamper everyday life. For example, talking dirty is a very common way someone is sexually aroused. But when a dependence forms on talking dirty, the person may suffer from lack of satisfaction unless dirty talk is involved and is then considered to have neurophilia. You dirty, dirty girl. Therefore, if you are concerned with if your sexual desire is leaning towards paraphilia, just ask yourself, can I live without this? Can I enjoy sexy, sexy time without this? If you answered no to either of these questions, then counseling may be in order in which there are several methods to overcome paraphilic thoughts and how it limits intimacy with your partner. Do not feel bad about seeking counseling, because at least you are not literally a cannibal. So just remember, the next time you're doing the do, there is probably someone doing something much more do. This has been True Facts About Paraphilia, written by Samantha Johnson and narrated by her brother Seth Johnson, as a favor. A very big favor. Thanks, Thanks for, for listening. listening. Why'd you say that? That was my part.